whatever you wind up doing is exactly what you should be doing. And I have not behaved one single day of my life, not one day of my life have I behaved and I am fine. I need your help. I can't tell you what it is. You can never ask me about it later and we're going to hurt some people. Who's Kyle going to take? Thank you for joining us on the Nikki Maduro show. So happy to see all of you guys in the chat on this bright and early Monday morning. Uh, Kim McAllister, did you have a fabulous St. Patrick's Day weekend? I had a weird weekend. Ooh, tell me all about it, my friend. Well, um, okay, there's two things that I have to tell you. Number okay. one mm-hmm. is the after party live is changing. <gasps> It is. It is. And okay. John Daly is stepping away from the show. Oh, okay. So now I'm kind of left to figure out what the show is going to be. And I've been thinking about it all weekend. Like, am I going to continue the show? Okay. Am I going to change it up? Am I going to change the name of it? Like, what's going to happen to it? So there's a little bit of that going on. That's been rolling around in my mind all weekend. Right. Um, and then also my daughter has this... She's part of the drum line. And you would think drum line, you know that movie drum line? <laughs> right, right. You know, then you beat on yeah. somebody else's yeah. drum and there's yeah, yeah, like yeah. this showdown on yeah, the field. Yeah. It's like a dance off but with drums or something, yeah. right? That's not what happens. <laughs> I loved the video you posted. I already know about this. I think it's really freaking cool, by the way, but go it's ahead, describe like it. It's like some new age, artsy, weird, interpretive dance, <laughs> laying on your instrument, <laughs> hiding behind it, popping up and down, weird thing uh-huh whatever happens they took first place at this competition in livermore Yay! so i'm really excited it's great for them i still don't exactly understand drumline if apparently here's the, th- the deal okay if you can hit it with a mallet okay it, it qualifies for drumline so all drums the marimba the um the uh vibraphone julia's on the vibraphone can you do your chest da, 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 da. is that count? you could do your chest and the, the gong because you hit it with something oh that's right? what i would want to do just right? whack it once because you only you only need to hit the gong once a song i would imagine symbols you can clash together like if you can beat it with something yeah it's ga- fair game <laughs> that's that belongs on a t-shirt but okay <laughs> Oh, that's so fun. So they took now, how was the competition they were up against? Well, it's funny because I was I drove, right? So I've had mm-hmm. a hard car full of high schoolers. And I arrive in Livermore to a parking lot full of practicing drumline people. Mm-hmm. And some of these high schools are huge. Right. The kids are leaping through the parking lot in their dance suits and they're doing all these I things. I love it. It's fun. But, you know, her high school in the scheme of things is on the smaller side. Right. So there were only four schools that she was competing against in her uh-huh. division. So. Well, I mean, congratulations yeah. to all of them. I think that that's awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, she and, and then you told us on Friday she's the major, right? So for the rest of her high school, she's like the leader of this. The drum major. But that's different than drum line. That's for the marching band. Oh, my God. Your daughter kicks ass. I am no. so proud of Julia. That is she's, awesome. She has to wear the suit, the drum major suit, which is different than everyone else's suit. Right. It's totally the nerd suit. It's got a kilt with a like a drapey thing over it that is cool it i mean she thinks it's really cool so i'm hey you know yeah i hear you i absolutely yeah. hear you all right well i i i had a decent weekend did you have any yummy corned beef and cabbage do you eat corned beef oh. and cabbage i feel like you said you don't like cabbage right yeah i don't or like corned beef. Corn beef thing but there was that here yeah how about you there was that here <laughs> We did do that. Yeah, we did it. We brought it over to, um, we haven't seen my in-laws in a while uh, because they don't drive. And so we're like, you know what? We made some corned beef. We brought it over there and we had that yesterday. And then we made, I love my husband. We made two corned beefs. And I'm like, why are you, why are we making so much corned beef? Like the mm-hmm. kids barely, barely, they like it. But I mean, it's not like they're eating adult sized portions over here. Right. Right. Well, we need them for sandwiches today, Kim McAllister. Oh. So now you guys remember I made these pastrami sliders for the Super Bowl. They were like with Swiss cheese and 
like a uh, thousand island dressing and pastrami on king's hawaiian rolls oh, well yeah. we will be redoing that mm -hmm. with our leftover corned beef for dinner tonight oh Harry, thank you so much for the $5 donation. When one door closes, another opens. Mm -hmm. Boeing's new slogan. If you guys haven't heard, another panel fell off. It was an external panel off of a Boeing uh, plane. I was I was reading an article, just to go off on a tangent away from my corned beef sandwich story, uh, about an aviation expert that said Boeing is like, messing up the aviation industry right now. We don't need any problems with the aviation industry. I'm just saying, Boeing, get it together. I have to fly next month and <laughs> I'm really hoping it's, it's probably a Boeing plane, right? I mean, are Did they, you look? I don't know if I, I don't think, I think it's a little too early to check. Um, I mean, how early can you check the plane that's going to be used? I don't know. I've never had to worry about it before, but now I feel like it's some information we need. Yeah, exactly. But then what am I going to do? Like, honestly, Kim, let's be honest. If, if I find out it's a Boeing plane, I'm still going on the plane. I'm going to do my little superstition thing, extra, extra, extra hard. But mm. um, what am I supposed to do over here? I got to go where I got to go. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, no. Uh, we're going to just hope and pray that everything goes well. But, yeah, Boeing had another issue again. Uh, hold on. I got some corned beef stories in the comments. Judy says, I like corned beef and cabbage and was sorry that I didn't get any yesterday. Make it. I mean, we make it. We never go and get it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, it's really not hard. I made it for the first time. So my husband had to work yesterday morning. And so, you know, like the thoughts, the first thoughts that go into your brain when you wake up, my first thought was corned beef. I was like, oh, do I know where my slow cooker is? Because that's usually how we make it is in the slow cooker. And I come out into the kitchen. And my husband was already a step ahead of me. Mm. Roaster. We used it. We used the Oster roaster. You know, sometimes you can make a turkey or something in it or whatever. Sure. So fit both of our things. We lost the rack to lift the meat off the thing. So I improvised with some... Um, twisted up foil, foil. Mm -hmm. so i did that and it took you know a few hours but it was delicious it's not hard to make corned beef jim says i had corned beef and cabbage a couple of weeks ago when i saw it at the store i thought to myself st patrick's day must be coming pretty soon but i had it a little early i see it too but i always tell myself there's only one time of year that i really eat corned beef it's st patrick's day it's not good for you you know what i mean it's really high in sodium and blah 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 but Vilma says, my husband's Irish. My kids are Irish. They all hate corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. And John Daly is getting a lot of love in the comments. Um, I guess, Kim, there's a notice on the After Party Live. Just to know, you know, because we're all big old family over here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we wish John the best. The After Party Live is going to be what Kim wants it to be. So, mm -hmm. you know what? It's still check it out. You know, it's going to be great. Um, oh, here's a good idea, Kim. You can make masubi with leftover corned beef. Ooh, -ee. I do like I like masubi. That's so an does interesting my husband. idea, huh? I mean, yeah. you know, you have to get the mold. I think the masubi mold is so you know to shape the rice and to press everything down and do all that. I need to get that. But yeah, I made great corned beef yesterday. I'm gonna make great sliders today. I'll take some pics and put it up on the uh, what's cooking on the Nikki Maduro show Substack, which you can find the link in. Uh, right under the show notes. Randy says on Southwest, you can see the type of plan that's being used when you make your reservations. Boeing flies all Boeing 737. So I don't need to ask. I guess I don't need to look, Randy. Mm -mm. If it's always a Boeing 737. Good luck and Godspeed. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, friend. Thank you so, so very much. Um, all right. Well, Sid. Yes, Vicky. Vicky says, I flew the United 737-900s both ways to Houston. Nothing flew off, but I was nervous. Nothing that you know about. Right? If external panels are flying, and this is the other thing. I mean, how nervous should we be that the planes are flying above our friggin' head when things keep falling off? Right? It's just, it's a bit much. It's an absolute bit much. And Boeing needs to get it together. I feel like, I really feel like there was a lapse in maintenance and we're seeing the results of this. So this has been going on for a long time. And remember, that poor guy that apparently took it, unlived himself, as they say on the YouTubes, right? That was the whistleblower for Boeing and the yeah. maintenance and everything. Like that. All of a sudden he's testifying, gets a hotel room and then unlives himself. There is something fishy going on here. I'm not saying what it is. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I do find it to be a bit of a stretch to think that a guy is blowing the whistle 
on a major corporation like Boeing and then just decides, even though he's been blowing the whistle for years, now he decides to unlive himself when all this information is coming out. Mm -mm -mm. I think something fishy's going on and Boeing is going to have a, a lot to answer for. That's for sure. Amy says, kayak has a filter to check plane type. More people have been using that filter since the plug accident. Yeah. Okay. But again, I might be filtering it. I think it's just to like get myself prepared that I'm on a Boeing plane. Is it really changing people's flight habits, flying habits? I really don't think so. I think if you're going to go to Cancun, you're going to Cancun. You're just going to be like, shoot, we're on a Boeing plane, which you most likely are. That's the problem. Boeing, oh, like, yeah. He's, they're the major, you know, uh, plane manufacturer. So yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's it's gonna be something that's gonna have to be taken care of very quickly. Where's Pete to judge? He needs to freaking get something together over here. Um, yes, Eric, you're so correct. So the whistleblower for Boeing uh, said he told people, "No, you're absolutely right. If something happens to me, well, I did not unlive myself." And um, he said that. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. I mean, because. It blowing the whistle for like a long time that's why this is so fishy and i don't know why it's not making more news i mean it did but i was like oh he was found in his car really no come on like it just seems so staged there's gonna be a documentary and i feel bad for the guy and his family like i really don't um spencer says too bad i didn't short boeing you know in the stock market it's priced in by now yeah i mean you gotta see these things coming you definitely have to see, see these things coming. I don't know. Kim's our, our resident royal expert. Did Princess Di say the same thing about herself? Like, if something happens to me, uh, I did not. But she didn't unlive herself. I she, don't know. She died in a, a horrific car accident. So that's awful. Um, okay. We're going to do some headlines. And then we're going to get into <laughs> Biden. Now, we don't have any video of it because I guess they don't take videos and, and photographers at this dinner. It was the Gridiron Dinner, which I absolutely love the name of that. It's like a kind of a football reference. Um, it's the Gridiron Dinner. And I think that Biden, he, again, he's been doing it for a very long time. He's good at politics. He is now taking all of the criticism about himself, his age, his mental acuity, and flipping it right back around on Trump. And it's easy to because Trump says the most off-the-wall crap ever that doesn't make any sense. I also have some sound from him, Trump, at that rally in Dayton, Ohio. And just the opening of it is going to just blow you away. Um Mike Pence talking about whether or not he's going to endorse the president, the former president. Uh, and what does it mean to be a Republican in America when Trump is your only option on the presidential ballot? Well, the former chair of the RNC has a message for you, and I will play that as well. Um, all right, click the thumbs up button, you guys. Support the show. The Super Chat, of course, is live. And thank you already to Harry and Spencer for coming in with a $5 donation each to the Super Chat. We love you guys. Thank you so, so very much. This is a 100% crowdfunded show. It takes a lot of work to put it on every day. And so if you could, please sign up for our monthly Patreon, thenickymadoroshow.com. Thenickymadoroshow.com is where you find the link. Uh, you could donate any amount you can. If you could bump it up, we really appreciate it. If you like PayPal, just go to paypal.com, hit the send button, and put in the email address, thenickymadoroshow at gmail.com. And there's so many other ways to support the show in the show notes every single day right under the about section. All right, let's do some headlines with Kim. Now, from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro Show presents News Czar Kim McAllister. Well, let us begin this newscast with President Biden because, hold on, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments on whether the Biden administration's push to remove misinformation on social media platforms violates the First Amendment. Two Republican attorneys general brought the case against the administration, arguing the government colluded with social media companies to carry out a campaign of unconstitutional censorship. The case focuses on communications from administration officials urging platforms to police information about the legitimacy of the 2020 election and the COVID pandemic. A vast majority of Americans reject former President Trump's claims of presidential immunity. 
A new Politico magazine Ipsos survey found 70% of those asked said they don't believe the U.S. presidents should be immune from criminal prosecution for alleged crimes that happened while in office. Now, the Supreme Court will hear arguments regarding Trump's immunity claim next Ugh. month. I'm so curious on how this is going to play out. I mean, again, even if they which should rule that he does not have immunity, then the case has to go forward. So it's it's not like it's cut and dry just next month with the Supreme Court. No, it isn't. But it's uh, interesting to see that people are just saying no, because all the polls we usually see are, oh, look at all the people supporting Trump, right? Well, maybe not. Exactly. And I don't know. Does that does that play out in an election? Maybe that this is a more valid poll of people that support him versus people that don't? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Guess what? The uh, first over-the-counter birth control pill approved in the United States is now available to order online. Wow. As of now... Customers can place orders for Opil through Amazon and Opil.com. They make it so easy to get this thing. The pill's manufacturer said online orders will be fulfilled within just a day or two. Major pharmacies like Walgreens and CVS said they will sell Opil once they get their shipments as well. Oh. I mean, I, I, how would you feel if you're like, Julia, you just got a package in the mail from Amazon and you open it up and it's the Opil? Okay, so again, happy that she's taking care of herself, right? Right. Um, sad that she wouldn't have come to me. Right. I mean, it's kind of one of those things of like, not only what if, I, honest question, and I don't know if you could speak from, but what if it was David that opened up, your husband opened up the package, just being like, oh, what did Kim buy? And then he sees <laughs> the O pill in there. Um, I mean, I don't know what Jay, my husband would do if he is the one that discovered the contraceptive. I think that the reaction has to match what, you know, that there's a reason they didn't tell you, right? And yeah. so if you freak out about it and say, you know, oh my God, you've, you're going on- You're having sex? That's why they didn't tell you. So you have to realize that and kind of tamp it down a little bit and say, all right, you know. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you're absolutely right. And I say that, and I love that you mentioned that. Every time my kids come to me or if I discover something, you know, that I want to have a conversation about, I try my best to be like, this is what they're going to remember is how you are approaching this. And I have mm -hmm. failed many times, obviously. I'm a parent and sometimes you just knee jerk reaction things. And you're mm -hmm. like, shoot, I wish I could do that over again. Right. But I do like important things like sex, especially relationships, all those sorts of things you want to. Chris is asking what happened to Norplant? Norplant was the one that they put into your arm, correct? I think it's, isn't it still around? I think it's still around, Chris. So um, I remember I got the the back in college, I took the Depo Provera, which was the mm. shot that you got every few months. Yeah. I could only do that. I think I only did one cycle of it. It messed with my hormones and emotions. And I'm already a hormonal, emotional person. Uh. Naturally, I couldn't. I was like, I'm crying for no reason. And this is the only thing that's changed. And so again, I went back on uh, oral contraceptives. And then mm -hmm. um, after I had in between my children, um, I did the um, IUD. So, you know, women got to take care of their own bodies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that, that we're making it a lot easier in this country. That's for sure. Um, it's funny. Eric wrote, maybe you shouldn't be opening packages that aren't addressed to you. <laughs> I love that. I forgot. I, I, I've, I that's lost the text. True. But there it is. That's true. That yeah. is very, very true. I will say this, though. Good I mean, point, Eric. Good point. as a parent, sometimes a package comes and you just kind of mm -hmm. because my Amazon account Every time you order something, it says my name on it. Mm -hmm. that, so I don't know how it is in other people's. Like if your kid wants to buy something on Amazon, it's still your name. So they send it to you. So that's kind of how that would happen in my house. If Julia orders something on Amazon, it has to be approved by a parent. Well, yeah, exactly. But the like, name on it willy -nilly is, is spend still money. mine. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it, like, yeah, but I mean, when it hits shipping and it's yeah. the address, my name is at the top. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? It's yeah. not like they're putting in the address again. The address is already in there and the name on it is my name. So I'm yeah. just opening packages left and right, even if I'm unsure if I purchased anything recently. So Sometimes she'll order like um, pencil lead refills or paper for school. Right. Like, oh, approve. And other times she'll order like... Um, perfume that's really expensive and i'm like decline decline no thank you, <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, geez 
Murphy says Norplant has to be inserted by a doctor. Not everyone has yeah. access to a medical facility. And that's what makes this O-pill so interesting is that for the first time, you really don't need a doctor's prescription to get on birth control, right? Yeah, exactly. Which makes it much more accessible. And as um, Natalie writes, there are plenty of women who need to hide because of their husbands, right? Yeah. Or birth control from their husbands. So yeah, yeah. That sucks. That yeah, sucks. That's true. Um, okay. So I don't know if you heard about this. Have you ever been to uh, Joanne's Fabrics? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the craft retailer Joanne is filing for bankruptcy. The 81 year old Ohio based company announced it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. After securing $132 million in new funding, Joann's has about 850 stores across the country. They are all expected to remain open. Oh, but okay. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? What The thing is, I feel like people are getting craftier, right? Like mm -hmm. people like to make their own things and, you know, the kind of they'll sell it on their own websites and things like that. I just feel like, again, People's buying habits change. So if I need a bunch of yarn in a certain color, guess what's really easy to do? Amazon.com. What do I need? What mm -hmm. color? What length? I mean, it's so easy to just go online. Now, could Joanne, you know, do more promotion online? Like go to our app. You could see everything there. You can get everything you want delivered straight to your home. Those sorts of things. Yes, but you have to have something that's that they can't find on Amazon. And that's, that's a terrible. And you know, the push and pull of Amazon is yes, you can get everything there. And so now places like Joanne's becoming obsolete. It's true. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Um, some, I don't know if this is good news or if this is not good news for you, what? but <laughs> people are getting back to getting married. Oh, okay. At pre-pandemic rates. Nice. New government data shows there were just over 2 million marriages in America in 2022, roughly 6.2 marriages per 1,000 people. That's not a lot. It's the highest level since 2018, but people are saying I do once again. Well, you you remember, I mean, obviously in the pandemic, I mean, so many weddings had to either be canceled or the plans had to be changed because all these venues were shutting down. And I can't imagine planning my, my wedding for like a year, year and a half, COVID hits, and now I'm asked out, right? Like right. I have to either push. So I, can, I bet that number includes a lot of people that put it off until they can have the wedding that they wanted to. I bet you if I was going to get married, I'd go to down, you know, whatever I could do to become married and then just have the celebration when everybody could be together because you mm -hmm. want the party that's what you want i know i knew a couple who uh, eloped and then they just walked into my house uh, on the fourth of july and they were like we got married <laughs> i was so Yay! happy for them but then i was like well that sucks i'm like where's the party <laughs> like, oh. what happened? and you know what i will tell you in the years that passed the uh the wife especially was kind of bummed that they never kind of had that big thing you know what i mean like it was all fun and dandy and then all of a sudden you're like well i did kind of want the party and they're like, yeah well have a party now, I guess. Celebrate. And I think they did on one of their major anniversaries. But yeah, it's well, not the same. You know, if a lot of people look at weddings and go, I could put a down payment on a house or I could have a wedding. Right. Yeah. We could pay off all of our student debt or oh. we could have a wedding. And so weddings have been become so expensive. I was reading mm -hmm. a story the other day about how people are paring down weddings. Yeah. Right. How the parties become different. Just do it in the backyard, have booze. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, if you don't get a venue, uh, I will say the cake industry, and I'm not knocking cake makers, you guys are talented. But unless you really like cake, cut the cake. Like, cut it out of your budget, not literally. Uh, cut it out, cut that out of your budget. We did a dessert bar. I didn't even eat any of the dessert at my dessert bar at my wedding because I don't, I'm not a big dessert person, you know? Uh, plus, brides and grooms are so busy at their wedding and, mm -hmm. you know, interacting with everybody. So, yeah, I mean, you could do that. And again, just have a party. Um, there are so many ways you can save money on a, on a wedding by not doing this big, extravagant type of thing. I got married in Maui. Yes. On the beach. And then we had a house up above with, um, long table and they uh we hired a woman to make a cake a bit, you know right but you do it all from afar so you at least i did i didn't have a wedding planner so i kind of planned the whole thing from afar and the woman comes and she puts the cake together and clearly she wasn't very experienced <laughs> 
because the top le- layers were sliding off the oh like no the cake was sliding around it was she didn't like put the, the dowels in that's what she no, probably forgot to it do. was a cake fiasco oh, and the, no. <laughs> we had to cut the cake like earlier than planned because you know it was like a cake disaster it's a story right yeah. i would have wanted a discount it's though it's true expensive, you know what i mean but uh natalie says i've never regretted my nine person wedding Oh. 27 years ago. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah, I mean, if I know someone getting married, they're going to be getting married in Lake Tahoe. Um, I'm not going to the wedding because it's going to be very, very small. They're having, mm-hmm. you know, family, friends, a very, and that's great. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like people feel so much pressure that they have to have a gigantic wedding right. because they know so many people. Mm-hmm. No, they, if those people care about you and love you, they will totally understand, wish you well. And the next time they see you, they'll raise a glass to you. That's what it just yep. needs to be. Do you see Celine Celine Dion's note? No. Yeah, she's determined to get back on stage. Oh. Even though she's had this recent medical di- uh, diagnosis, she's fighting this rare autoimmune disorder called yeah. stiff person syndrome. Well, over the weekend, she posted a photo of herself and her three sons and a note saying, although her battle with stiff person syndrome is really difficult, she is set on returning to the stage and set as to living a norm- as normal a life as possible. She thanked her family and her friends and her fans for all their support. She also sent encouragement to other people fighting stiff person syndrome as well. Wow. Yeah. You know, I I love Celine Dion, I think. And she she showed up at the Grammys, remember? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she was with Billie Eilish when she was on stage, possibly. Uh, and everyone was shocked to see her. Um, amazing voice. That was the moment when Taylor Swift kind of... Oh, was it Taylor Swift she was with? Well, she was presenting an award to Taylor Swift, and Taylor Swift didn't really acknowledge her very well, I don't yeah, think. Yeah. Th- and you know how what it took for her to get there on that stage with this, right, everything going right. on health-wise? Yeah. So I think I did read something about that. I mean, she did go backstage and kind of redo her moment with Celine Dion or whatever. But again, right. I would, I personally, this is just my opinion, Celine, don't go on stage and not be able to be Celine Dion. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah. You take care of yourself. Like, I know the desire to want to get back on stage. That has to be so strong. But mm-hmm. you don't want article after article about, oh, you know what I mean? It was not the same. Cel- Unless it is. Maybe it is. Maybe she's yeah. going to shock everybody. But I would just take care of yourself. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And I think it probably is hard to admit that too. Yeah, right? that you have to give it up even because if you're not ready. The moment you admit that, it means that you realize you're in decline. And maybe yeah. it's kind of a mental battle too, where once you admit it, you know, you sail downhill. But if you if you hold on to the fact that you're coming back, you're coming back. Right. Then... She was supposed to have a residency in Vegas, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah. yeah. And then she had to push that off. So yeah. And then what do you do? Then you just focus on your health and that's not mm. getting better. And ugh, awful. At the box office this weekend, you want to see the big, big winner? Uh, is it Kung Fu Panda? Mm-hmm. I did not go to the movies this weekend. I did not. You know what I wanted? I started to watch last night, but I fell asleep. Was Anatomy of a Fall, which oh. was uh, it was an Oscar winner for the actress in it. Yeah, I uh, was but good. I fell I fell asleep though, not Uh-oh. because it was boring, but because I started it too late, and then yeah. and it was St. Patty's Day, and I had had a couple beers, oh, so uh, I just I see went how to bed. that worked out. Yes, <laughs> and also no, we, no. Then I'm falling asleep, and I checked how much time was left, and it was like another hour. It's a long one. It's over two hours. I think it's over mm-hmm. two and a half hours. And I was like, yeah, we're not finishing that, so I have to because I paid five bucks to watch it on Prime, so I got to watch it today. Oh, I missed out on that. Well, hand. Kung Fu Panda Four edged out Dune Part Two by less wow. than a million yeah. dollars <laughs> for the top spot in this weekend's <laughs> box office. Kung Fu Panda Four took in an estimated thirty million bucks in its second week in theaters. Dune Part Two brought home twenty nine point one million wow. in its third week. So things I don't are going know. well I think for my the son Fu would want to watch that. Mm-hmm. Maybe I, I just kind of feel like if I'm paying money for a movie, I just, I'm over it being a cartoon. When my kids were little, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. When Frozen came out and all those, yes. But now my kids are teenagers. Like, am I yeah. paying, you know, all this money? Maybe I'll go to the cheapy theater down the street and you know, on a, in the middle of the day type thing and take them. But unless they really want to see it, we're waiting until it comes out on streaming. Speaking of kids, today is a teacher and service day, which means my kids have the day off. My kids had Friday off. Really? Last yeah. Friday is for Cesar Chavez day. Yeah. So um, they could come in at any moment, just FYI. <laughs> You're warning us. Well, actually, like uh, my daughter's home, taking her to school 
having a little tummy issues this morning. So we're going into school late today after okay. my show. Yeah. But uh, my kids were off on Friday in what was funny. Now it's funny, not funny. So Friday was Cesar Chavez day. And that's why my kids had it off, but not okay. every school district had it off. Obviously your mm -hmm. kids didn't have it off. No. Nope. Now I, I hope this doesn't come across as racist or, or some sort of inappropriate quote unquote joke, but it's a joke. My friend said, I'm talking on the phone with my friend on Friday, like after I get off the show. And she can hear my kids in the background. And she's like, what the hell are your kids doing home? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, my kids are home for Cesar Chavez Day. Are your kids home? And she's like, no, my kids are at school. And she, her kids go to a largely Hispanic school district. So oh, that's weird. Well, that, this is why, I, as SJ Lola, this is the excuse they gave us. I don't know if Cesar Chavez Day is March 31st, but that was the sign that said, they're off for Cesar Chavez Day on hmm. whatever day was, what was it? I six, think they're six. trying to invent reasons for a three-day weekend on St. Patrick's Day. But but then I want Monday off, <laughs> not Friday. Like, I want Monday off because that's the day after St. Patty's Day, if that was the thinking. But, I mean, isn't it weird that the largely Hispanic school district wouldn't have Cesar Chavez Day off? And then my kids, and, I mean, San Jose is very Hispanic anyway, but they, they do have it off. It just seemed really like, can't we just all have it off or all go to school, please? And I'm erring on the side of send your kids to school. Send your kids to school. Um, She's right. It is not Friday. It was not Friday. It is, March 31st. according to timedate.com, the That's March 31st. That's what is 31st. the excuse the school gave us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. It is. It was not called an, in as far as I know, I could be wrong, but I saw a huge sign on one of the schools that said no school Friday this past Friday. No. Cesar Chav for C Cesar Ch Chavez well, if they didn't know who he was, maybe they learned something about him and you know, that's good, right? Hold on. I, I, this is going to really bother me. Yeah. I swear to God. I don't know why they did that then. They better not be off on the 31st as well. That's all I'm going to say. We, we already get, celebrated. We didn't get any excuse for the um, the day off today. There was there was it's no like, celebrating of anything. <laughs> it was just a teacher and service day. You're off. No school. They're like, I had an eye problem. I couldn't see myself going to school today. Thinking this morning, you know, a lot of people probably didn't realize there was no school today. Okay. The, even though, you know, I was talking to my sister and she didn't know until last night. Okay. And her son said, we don't have to go to school tomorrow. And she went, what? And I was thinking, she, I go, don't, didn't you read the messages from the right. school? Like they sent out a note, reminder, no school on Monday. Uh -huh. She goes, I have to be honest with you. Sometimes I don't read those things. I'm what? like, well, it would have been your no! fault if yes. you loaded everybody in the car and then showed up at school. Oh. But I'm sure there were so many people that did that this morning. Oh, that's no, yeah. if you, that's on you then. I, oh, you have to read every yeah. single thing that comes from the school because then you can yeah. pretty much be like off the hook. I did that when yeah. my kids were in preschool. There was some sort of holiday and this was when they were little. So, you know, getting them all, all their stuff and back to the car and drove down there and I drive up and it's empty in the parking lot. And I'm like, what day is <laughs> it? And there's nothing worse than getting your button gear to get your kids to wherever they're going when they're little and then not having it. Maybe the kids just decided to tell <laughs> no, you they had the day off. off. No, everybody no, was, it was off. It was I'm a real you. one. It was I'm a real you. one. Yeah, it's That's crazy. pretty funny. Um, by the way, you didn't do this in your news. Are you done with your news? Yeah. You want to throw another story in there? Petaluma car break-ins. Oh yeah. I saw that. Story. I was thinking of you now. I don't think mm -hmm. it was anywhere near where you live though. Right? Not my neighborhood, but it could right. have been. Uh, they said Cherry Valley, uh, which is on the West side of town. They said, um, trying to figure out where there's a bunch of different neighborhoods yeah. and they at least 30 cars broken into it's kind of the smash and grab thing where they smash the window they take what's inside yeah, yeah. that sucks and you know what and somebody correct me because i'm totally pulling this out of my butt right now but i thought it was true and i could be wrong i love to make things up um if your car is parked on the street your homeowner's insurance won't cover it it has to be parked in the driveway no that can't be true i think that that's true oh your homeowner's insurance but your car insurance will well, I mean, your car insurance will cover everything, but you might get a ding on your, 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 uh, your, like a point and raise your rates and stuff like that. I mean, would you rather take the forever increase in your insurance or pay it out of pocket for a window? Well, I mean, your homeowner's insurance is going up or your yeah, car insurance true. is going up. I mean, no matter which one you say, hey, this happened, I need you to pay me, they're going to turn around and raise your rates. So I don't know. I, I, know. Guess... I don't know why you have insurance because the minute you use it, you're screwed. That's right? exactly like, right. I don't know why I'm paying for it. It's so freaking stupid. I hate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And it was concerning because I do park my cars outside because uh -huh. my garage is full of crap. So... <laughs> 
I really need to rectify that situation. But the crap yeah, or the car? <laughs> uh, all of the above. But yeah, this rash of smash and grab robberies, more than 30 cars overnight. They call it, you know they, what they call it when your car is smash and grabbed? Bipped. Bipped. Yeah, they got B- bipped. B I P P E D, bipped. That's a new word for me. Well, oh yeah no i mean it's it sucks because and it's happened i mean it happens in neighborhoods all the time people are like there was a guy being interviewed by ktvu and he's like i just assume that stuff kind of happens in san francisco and doesn't make its way up to petaluma no it happens i feel everywhere. like it's just a holes maybe young people but i don't want to just say young people because i feel like that gives them a bad rap you know mm-hmm. what i mean but what do you do you can't do anything about it i mean you know what you do you say you tell your whole entire family over and over again if you like it, don't leave it in the car. But that doesn't mean that your window's not going to get smashed. There could be nothing in your car, oh, but they're just going to break the window just to see. They're safe. not going to get anything. Yeah. They're getting nothing if they if they smash into there. It's going to be a, just a busted window. Ugh. What it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Kim says you just have to pay the deductible. That would not be a ding. I meant like a ding for your insurance, not on your license. Mm-hmm. I misspoke. But yeah, I mean, I feel like if you use your car insurance to pay for anything, your rates are going to go up. That's yeah. what I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Vicky's like, well, it's not senior citizens. That would be a news story, though, Vicky. If there was just a rash, like a gang of 70 year olds that were just fed up with life and we're just going to bust through windows. The nobody senior... would be, nobody would guess it was them, right? Nobody would guess. The senior bippers. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sounds like a, like a sports team for a senior citizen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this report sponsored uh, by you. It is. And that means we do rely on you to help us support this Nikki Maduro show. We're at the Nikki Maduro show.com, the Nikki Maduro show.com. Lots of links there, including the Patreon and PayPal link. And if you have trouble with the website, I don't know why you would, but if that happens, uh, find it all in the description of the show as well. Yep. All of that information is there. So thank you to all the people that support the show in an ongoing way. And if you're considering that a big mahalo to you as well, I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Nikki Maduro show. It is indeed. And for some of you might have, I don't know why it would be hard to find, but yeah, if you're looking at YouTube and you see like, you know, be sure to subscribe. There's a little thing that says more click that. And then everything opens up and you can see everything there. So, um, Please support the show. 100% crowdfunded. And we love all of you guys so much. Okay. So let's get into the gridiron dinner. I, I don't know much about this gridiron dinner. All I know is that no photo, no TV was allowed. But apparently, good old Joe Biden, he is not taking criticisms about his health, his age, his mental acuity, lying down. He said... um, The big news this week, President Joe Biden said at a weekend Washington roast was that two candidates had clinched their party's nomination for president, but one was too old, too mentally unfit for the job, and the other is me, which I thought was just such a good line against Trump because Trump does have the same baggage that I would say that President uh, Biden has. He is old he does misspeak but one of them isn't a raving lunatic Mm -hmm. that says the most insane things all of the time speaking of which did you hear what he said over the weekend yes so i was just gonna say donald trump was at a rally in dayton ohio i'm gonna play you a video this is how they freaking opened Hold on, make sure I get it up. And I'm this is how you, they opened it. I cannot believe this. The crazy came right out. I mean, mm. listen to this. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th <laughs> hostages. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to sit through the whole entire song. Lord. Oh my God. Please stand, not for our country. Not for our veterans, not for anything like that, but for the January 6th hostages. Mm. Like you have to be absolutely insane. Um, I just I I really don't understand. He doubled down. Trump did during this this um, rally in Dayton, Ohio. And Mike Pence, Mike Pence, our former vice president, whose wife was pissed off when he ran with Trump initially was on with uh, Margaret Brennan and was asked about some of the comments at the rally. You see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are, as hostages. They've been treated terribly. 
and very unfairly, and you know that, and everybody knows that. And we're going to be working on that soon. The first day we get into office, we're going to save our country, and we're going to work with the people to treat those unbelievable patriots, and they were unbelievable patriots and are. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. You know, in the past, you've said Mr. Trump's reckless words endangered you and your family on that day. What do you think when you hear him refer to those people facing charges as hostages and patriots? Well, I think it's very unfortunate at a time that there are American hostages yep. being held in Gaza. Yep. That uh, the president or any other leaders would refer to people that are moving through our our uh, justice system uh, as hostages. And uh, it's just... It's just unacceptable. I, I was there on January 6th. I, I've yeah. no doubt in my mind, Margaret, that that some people were caught up in the moment and that entered the Capitol. And uh, uh, and they're certainly entitled to due process of law for uh, any nonviolent activities that day. But uh, the assaults on police officers, ultimately an environment that, that claimed lives, uh, is something that uh, uh, I think was tragic uh, that day. And I'll, I'll never diminish it. Yeah, but Trump will. Trump will diminish it. Trump will call them literal hostages and patriots. And yet he gets to continue running for office. Like it blows my mind. It blows my mind that Donald Trump can say these wackadoo things and and, and can get away with it. And he can. He can totally get away with it. Here's another um Here's another clip from the Dayton, Ohio rally that's getting a lot. Oh, Beatrice, Lady Beatrice, then $10 donation. Thank you so much. She writes, good for Biden. People throw a lot of shade on his age, but Trump should not be throwing stones here. He's not a college freshman. If anything, he's the mad freaking hater. Exactly. Exactly. Now, this is another clip that's been making the rounds. I'm going to be fair here. Okay. Uh, But let's first, let's first listen to it. Here we go. We're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, this is now it. if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll for be the, the least of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Shortly after the speech, the Trump campaign tried to clean up those comments, insisting in a statement to NBC News, the former president was only talking about a bloodbath for the auto industry and auto workers. And before everyone gets triggered and it is shocked, because this is a shock opera yeah. that we have to unfortunately endure because we're constantly shocked by what he says. But don't let that shock, don't <laughs> let that trauma I love that. let you forget <laughs> what you're hearing. And she's right. Now, let's just say he was only talking about the auto industry. That's still bad. Like, we need the auto industry. We need to be able to, you know, bring in foreign cars. A 100% tariff. I'm not quite sure how that's going to impact the auto industry, but I'm guessing it's going to do something to it. So Either he's completely irresponsible. <laughs> yes. Or he's completely senile. You don't say there's going to be a bloodbath blood come November if I don't get elected. Right. After everything that happened with January 6th. Exactly. After, you know, saying you want to be a dictator on day one. After all of these things, that's not what you say unless you mean it. Mm. Well, there was another instance, and I, I I took down all the videos. There's so many videos. You can Google it on, on X or whatever. There was one where he's trying to read. Now, remember, remember one of the criticisms that Trump had against Biden was like he would read off the teleprompter and da 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 He needed a teleprompter. He couldn't. The wind was blowing in Dayton. And so you could, you know, those like teleprompters that are on each side so he can look each direction and read. It was blowing. And he literally said, he's like, I can't read the teleprompter. We're not paying the teleprompter guy. We're not doing this, that, and the other. And I'm like, he's probably not going to pay the teleprompter guy because the guy never pays his bills. So yeah, it's just, um, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't um, understand the appeal. Uh, President Biden um, was, you know, at a rally himself. Where was he? He was in Philadelphia. This was last week uh, that President Biden was at this rally. And he was kind of calling out people that 
aren't upset or offended by the things that happen at Trump's rally and the things that that Trump says on stage. Here's President Biden. Because the soul of the country is who we are. Look, you know, did you ever think, those of you who are over 40, did you ever think we'd be in a situation where we talk to each other like we talk these days? Yep. Why you see things that we see that no matter how tense things were, and they're really tough in other parts of our history, We you ride down the street and there was a Trump banner with a FU on it and a little and a six-year-old kid putting up his middle finger. Did you ever say, no, I'm serious. Did you ever think you'd hear people talk the way they do? Look, it demeans, it demeans who we are. That's not who America, that's not America. And I think that he makes such a good point there. Like, and I know it's kind of grandfathery and, and, and those sorts of things, but we have lost decorum. We have lost, you know, class in politics. And I know that, you know, politicians, they have this reputation of being liars and cheats, blah, blah, blah. But we, we should, we should keep up airs, right? Like we should, we should demand civility. We should demand people not just say whatever the hell they want to say when they're trying to be a leader for this country, because what happens when you have somebody like Trump, he brings out the worst in all of us. And it's in there. It's it's kind of like people that follow the bully at school, right? It's like, yeah, you know, when there's insults being there, yeah, it, you just kind of get caught up in it. And it's not who you should want to be. And in many cases, it's not who you truly are. But the longer you align yourself with that sort of behavior, the sooner it does become who you are and it becomes your reputation and then you're expected to behave this way and then you can literally just be somebody that you weren't four eight ten years ago and that sucks you know what i mean and it and we're better than that and i love that that biden had said it like that but you have to get through to enough republicans to ensure that we don't see another donald trump presidency um, oh, I don't know why the music is on. I apologize. Um, Michael Steele uh, is the former chair of the uh, Republican National Committee. Uh, and he was on, was he on CNN? Da, da, da. Yeah, he was, no, he was on MSNBC's The Weeknd. And he's on this panel and, you know, obviously it has, uh, you know, conservatives and, and, and liberals and Democrats and what have you. It's, they're just having this conversation about voting and getting through. And they were talking about Mike Pence and Mike Pence saying, I can't in good conscience, you know, endorse Donald Trump. What he does in the ballot box is completely different. But this was the message that Michael Steele, again, the former chair of the RNC, had for Republicans out there. I get it. I get it with some Republicans who, who said, oh, I just can't vote for a Democrat. But this is not you're voting for your country. You're not voting for a Democrat in this case. I have disagreements with Joe Biden on a number of policies. Oh, we know. Not, yeah, y'all know. <laughs> right? and, that, and that's OK. But that, that's that, that's a good policy. That's good and healthy for our democracy yep. to have those disagreements. Well, we're sitting here having conversations about a, a president with 91 federal accounts against him. Um, and people are scratching their head and wondering, oh, I don't know, you know, should I support him? Or says, as Simone just noted, he wants to be a dictator. And you you go to, well, hmm, I'm still worried about the 81-year-old. <laughs> You've got, somehow we've got to shake ourselves yes. out of that fog and understand what this is about. And I do get the idea uh, that it's hard for some uh, Republicans to, to jump, go across the street. But baby, you need to do it. I was waiting. I was waiting for Michael Steele. Come on, baby. Just the get country the needs you. There you go. The yeah. R and former RNC chair is telling you, get it together. Trump is not your guy. Isn't that crazy? I, I mean, love who would have thought? Yeah. But that's where I, we are, Kim. As a country, like you cannot be serious with Trump. You cannot be serious with this guy. I would I mean, I I like Kamala Harris. But I think for a lot of people, they're probably thinking, oh, it's really Kamala Harris versus Trump, which it so? isn't. But right? Kamala Harris is not that much different than Biden, except she's a woman. And even, so this people's sexism is say, coming out. Even if that were to be the case, I'm still happy. I'm still happier. Right. I'm still voting for democracy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, how do you not? How do you look? I mean, again, look, just those two clips I played of Trump. Right. Ed versus Biden. Biden's yeah. trying to bring out the best in us. He's trying to reach across the aisle. Come, let's have a conversation. I mean, he's the adult in this race versus mm -hmm. this child bully liar 
<laughs> sexual assaulter. <laughs> like I just, I don't get it. I, I have friends that just love Trump and I don't, and they're good people. And I, yeah. I look at them and I go, I, I'm, I'm done having the conversation. I'm not trying yeah. to convince them anymore because there's nothing I can say. No. If you can't see and hear how, who he is, nothing I'm going to say is going to get through yeah. that brainwashing. So I don't try. I just hope and pray that there are enough Michael Steeles, right? That there are enough people that are like, you do not have me fooled, mf -er. Like, I can see through your BS. Mm -hmm. I understand you're a grifter. Yes, you might have an R after your name, but it should just be a DT because Donald Trump only cares about himself. I think this is a really good point that mm. uh, Fox News, this is from John, Fox News and other right-wing media filter everything Trump says so the people that are loving him like you're you're talking about your friends they don't see the the slip ups like we do they don't see the nasty things that he says like we do right because yeah. we're looking at all sides we're looking at everything they just see the president biden continuous you yeah. know role of whatever stuttering or whatever they feel is making him unable to hold office they don't see the trump no yeah. and again i I'm not saying you have to agree with every Biden policy. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is the conversation can happen under our Biden presidency. We can mm -hmm. vote. We can we could trust in our systems. We could do those things under a Biden presidency. Trump lives in Never Never Land, right? Like this weird world where when he gets what he wants, everything was on the up and up. And if he ever loses, there's something nefarious going on, right? Mm -hmm. So he's not sane. He is delusional. He is delusional uh he's delusional uh, delusional about the 2020 election he has passed that on as you know <laughs> fact to so many trumpers out there but also he's obstructed progress even while he's not president i mean look at the border bill he forced he used his power to stop republicans from literally getting what they wanted literally passing their own bill their bipartisan bill he stopped them from doing that imagine that control over a party i just don't get it and you know it's it's fooling people into thinking that he's going to make the world better and it's good now yeah and i saw this too trump unable to make his 464 million dollar bond in the civil fraud case he says he can't find an insurance company <laughs> to underwrite his bond to Stop cover me. this massive judgment in that uh, fraud case uh, brought against him in New York, right? And his attorneys say that he's approached 30 underwriters wow. to back this bond. It is due by the end of the month. Uh, it exceeds with interest 464 million. They say very few bonding companies will consider a bond of anything approaching that magnitude. Oh God, yes. Uh, I mean <laughs> His reputation shows them that they shouldn't trust him as far as they as far as they can throw him. Absolutely. So what's he going to do? I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's he's going to have to do something, right? So he let's see. So well, they're obviously saying that it's too high anyway. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, Letitia James's office continues to argue that Trump should put up the full amount. Yeah. He wants it reduced to 100 million. You know, it makes you wonder why he can't put it up if he's so friggin' rich, right? A hundred, a hundred million is because a lot of bond companies have that as their threshold for what right. they will give. Too bad. So, so sad. Yeah. And so including fees and including interest, he'll need to come up with more than $550 million in this case. Yeah. He can't I just do feel, it. He can't Where's all the money that you have? Exactly. Where oh, you don't want to put up money? your own money or do you not have that money? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nicholas, six times in bankruptcy. He's a moron. He's not a good business. I mean, I will say this. Bankruptcy laws, we were just talking about Joanne's fabrics, right? Mm -hmm. Joanne's going to still have stores and they're filing for bankruptcy. The way that works is legitimate, right? But the fact that he keeps doing it, that's not the problem. The problem is he doesn't pay his debts, right? He keeps pushing it off. He hires people. We heard it all throughout the last election and nobody was listening. He's a grifter. Yeah. He's a grifter. And he sells you BS and people buy it even though they can't afford it. And he doesn't care that you can't afford it. Remember his his campaign, like you paid once and they thought it was like a one-time payment and they kept taking money from people and they, they couldn't get their money back? Dude, like, the guy sucks. The hey, guy if, sucks. If you can't afford to put up that money, how are you going to pay the state of New York that money if you lose your appeal? Yeah. 
I mean, I, I guess don't know. they're going to have to sell off Mar-a-Lago or sell off a, bus- oh, a building. You know, and it couldn't have happened to a worse person. Like he's just, he deserves everything he gets and more because of everything that I mentioned. I, n- I do not have Trump <laughs> derangement syndrome. The guy sucks. And I can say that there is truth. <laughs> like he sucks as a person, as a leader. He is no bueno like he sucks so i don't know what else to say but get it together mm-hmm. yeah he lies all he lies if his lips are moving something false is likely gonna come out soon mm-hmm. like it just is and i just don't get it, it he not can't get cool. rid of this by by declaring bankruptcy According so to then what Hoover. happens then if he can't pay it? Does he get to go to prison? Can we please see him in the jumpsuit, please? <laughs> I mean, does that because what would happen to me if I couldn't pay? What would happen to me? Uh, whatever happens to the average American needs to happen to this dude, because I don't it can't just be, well, I'm running for president. So if I if I do something wrong and I, I announce that I'm going to be running for president, does right. that mean I don't I don't have to face any consequences? Of course not. Yeah. Of course not. Um. I want to play this other video, and it's kind of long, but we have some time. And you guys know that I'm not a huge Bill Maher fan. I'm not. I'm not a, a huge right. Bill Maher. I don't watch his show a lot. Usually if he crosses my my purview, it's because it's something that he said has gone viral. And I'm torn about this comment because it has to do with politics a bit. It has to do with, like, why – do people not like Biden, but still like Trump? Why are some of these conversations about how the country is being run right now, right? Are you better off than you were four years ago, blah, 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 right? Mm. Uh, that's the whole, whole conversation when the facts are what they are. But then, so Bill Maher is going to start with that. And then he's going to transition to something that is beyond politics, that is kind of more about, you know, who we are as a as a population in 2024, this generation that we're raising, this, this way that we focus on issues in our personal lives and in society. So I want to play you a little, do I have it ready to go? Hold on. I might not have it ready to go yet. Um, so Bill Maher starts off in a way that was kind of surprising to me. And the, the reason why it was surprising to me was because I don't really consider him a Biden fan right mm-hmm. i i kind of find him to be you know, more conservative an income poop who criticizes everything and comes up with no solutions but right. he starts off his commentary talking about um the low approval ratings for president biden and and he starts off by kind of talking about how people really aren't seeing things for how they are okay here we go i got it all set ready to go hold on let me get it going Da, 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 da. Okay, so here is Bill Maher. Again, I'm not a fan. I want you guys to tell me how you feel. And it's long. So I'll pause it so we'll have conversations about it. But he, he kind of goes on a little bit of a rant here. So here we go. And finally, new rule. Being obsessed with your mental health is bad for your mental health. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot lately about a puzzle many are struggling with. Why are Biden's approval ratings so low when things are generally pretty good? And of course, there are problems. America is a big place, but wages are rising. Unemployment is negligible. The stock market is soaring. We somehow brushed off both the Trump presidency and the pandemic. Yes, inflation persists for a lot of things, but, you know, an actual good, nice sized TV now costs 60 bucks. Who gets credit for that? Hmm. We've got next day shipping, stuffed crust pizza, legal (laughs) weed, GPS and porn on the phone. Cheer the fuck up. (laughs) Okay, so I'm going to pause it right here. So he says, cheer the F up, right? Like, cheer Mm -hmm. up. Life is not that hard. And so I was reading some of the comments, and I'm going to play a little bit more of this, but I was reading some of the comments, and it's where Bill Maher takes this conversation that has some people upset. Because he's kind of making the point that a lot of our problems, what we view as problems either in our own households, with ourselves, are kind of self-inflicted. And people are saying, "Mm, you're oversimplifying it. Stop acting like life in America in 2024 is unbearable. Biden's ratings are in the toilet, not because he's doing such a bad job, but because a lot of Americans like to live with their head in the toilet. Let's look at the numbers. 
Let's look at the numbers. Almost a third of American adults have reported a depression, a depression diagnosis at some point in their life. And while depression is, of course, a very real thing, it's also true that earlier generations never suffered from the expectation that you're supposed to feel good all the time. One in eight adults are on antidepressants, and that doesn't include the ones who steal them from their kids. <laughs> And the kids, <laughs> the newest TikTok challenge is self-diagnosis of mental problems. Because what's more of a hotbed of mental health than TikTok? In 2022, the CDC released the results of a survey on teen mental health, and over 40% said they feel persistently sad or hopeless. And antidepressant use among young males is rapidly rising, unlike their dicks. <laughs> <laughs> now... Without a doubt, antidepressants can be life-saving for those who need them, but here's the thing. About three-quarters of Americans who are on them haven't been diagnosed with depression at all. They just want a magic pill. We spend $6 billion a year on drug ads, all featuring someone emerging from darkness to play with a dog. <laughs> and all with the message, you're a sad sack of shit, now take this. Mm -hmm. Also, and don't get mad at me, I'm just citing statistics, but the people who really shouldn't be that bummed out but are acting like it anyway are exactly who you think, white women. <laughs> <laughs> An estimated 35% of whom are on antidepressants, although in their defense, have you seen the prices at Lululemon? <laughs> These gals are so distraught, they can barely keep their appointment with the, the Vietnamese girl who does their nails. <laughs> Calling Dr. TikTok. But every bad feeling isn't a disease. This and part, Americans really this. need to stop pathologizing everything. No one's just sad anymore. They're clinically depressed. They don't merely worry. They have chronic anxiety. Do you like things neat and organized? That's OCD. You're bummed when it's cold out? Seasonal depression. <laughs> Hate being alone, separation anxiety. <laughs> Bored, that's ADHD. Shy, social anxiety disorder. Why, because you don't want to go to the office party? Nobody does. <laughs> Best case scenario, you have too much fun and it leads to getting fired. <laughs> are you moody? No, you're bipolar. And some people are bipolar. And some people are on the spectrum. But sometimes on the spectrum is just a hall pass for being a jerk. So, I mean, he kind of goes off on all those other things as well. And mm -hmm. this is the thing. And this is why I wanted to, to, to do this. Because I'm transitioning away from, you know, politics a little bit. But it does seem like we're sometimes, not all the time, looking for something outside us to blame for the situation that we're in, right? So if, you know, I lose my job, you know, it's somebody else's fault. Mm -hmm. If if the economy is not doing well, it's Biden's fault, even though intellectually we know the economy is doing better. Um, the thing people, the things people choose to spend their money on, we talk about this all the time, the mm -hmm. things people choose to spend their money on in one hand and then claim that the economy sucks in another is yeah. crazy. And so, when, we, when it comes to the mental health issue, I mean, I think he kind of has a point in the fact that there has to be a reason, a clinical reason for the way that we're feeling sometimes. And sometimes life is just crappy, right? Like sometimes you're just upset. Sometimes, you know, I, I was cracking up about like the seasonal, you know, you know, yeah. you're sad because it's, I hate it yeah. when it's cloudy. I'm not going to diagnose myself with something though. Right. And I feel like sometimes I could take away attention from people who really do need the help, right? Yeah. Like you do have something seriously wrong with you. And I just feel like maybe we need to pull back a bit. Yeah. And I, but I, I, I hope we don't pull back so much that the people that need the help don't get it. Does that make sense? It does. I think the, I don't know. I, I think he's oversimplifying it. I think that people that need to be on medicine mostly are on medicine just because you're bummed that it's winter. Right. Right. Or you're bummed that it's not sunny outside doesn't mean you're going to go seek antidepressants. Mm. Right. 
because you understand about yourself. Oh, I'm just a little, you know, I, I wish that it was sunny outside. That's what you say to yourself. And then you say, oh, but it's not. And it will be again soon. And you move on. Yeah. Right. And so there's a difference between that and people who are lulled into depression by the fact that, you know, that it's dark and that it's winter and that I think there are people that are truly affected by I'm bummed that it's not. Right. Yeah. But don't yeah. you think that's, and again, I'm just having the conversation. I'm not yeah. saying this is 100% the case for everybody, but sometimes if, you, if you're surrounded by people that are always either self-diagnosing or saying that they have a certain mental disorder or mental right. illness, that makes you self-reflect and be like, well, maybe I have a a mental maybe that's why I feel this way or do this thing and and sometimes it could be like no and that's why I think like you know you like things neat and organized doesn't mean you have OCD it just think, right. means you like things and everyone uses right. these terms and so that dilutes people that actually have this issue right. Right. and that's I think also the problem there's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy with yourself and, and and accepting of yourself but when we're constantly focusing on well I don't feel good with this there must be a reason for that you know, maybe sometimes life is just ups and downs. Yeah, Mama Three Boys, I think people who self-diagnose are seeking attention. The other reason I brought this up, because these two stories crossed my, my, my interwebs over the weekend, is this thing that's happening in San Mateo. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with this, okay? I don't. I think that if we're going to put money towards something, it's, it's a worthy cause. Do I want my tax dollars to go to something like this? I'm not quite sure. Um, I don't live in San Mateo County. I don't know if it's going to, to spread. But last month, San Mateo County declared that loneliness is a public health emergency. Yeah. And, and this past Friday, they have launched a new campaign in order for people to be happier. Here's a little bit of that report from ABC7. Or Zach Fuentes. Loneliness isn't just a word, it's a real physical and mental health issue. And many don't have the social connection experts say can be vital to our overall health. Taylor J and Carolyn Kelly say that social isolation is especially difficult for adults over 40. That's why they created this app called Wiser Friends. So people can really connect when you get a little bit older. You might be an empty nester or retired or new to town. And we thought it would be fun and easy. Launched in mid-January, the app comes as the U.S. and governments around the world recognize the loneliness epidemic. The problem is so bad that last year, the Surgeon General declared loneliness a public health crisis. This is a problem that has been building for decades in our country. Uh, COVID certainly worsened it. It poured fuel on the fire, but that fire was burning before. In January, San Mateo County became the first in the U.S. to recognize loneliness as a public health emergency. Supervisor David Canepa introduced the resolution that was voted on unanimously. Friday, he announced the launch of the Are You Lonely campaign and a call for the county to help fund it. We passed loneliness as being a public health crisis. Words only mean so much. Now we need the investments in action. So whether it's, you know, peer help, whether it's uh, a social media campaign. Canepa says he hopes any data they'd get from the campaign could be used to bring to the state in hopes that it would establish an office of loneliness. Give us two years and don't be surprised if we have an office in the state of California dealing with loneliness. Okay. So. <sighs> okay. I don't want to minimize the loneliness problem that we have. Okay. I'm not. I'm not, do we need another app to deal with something that I feel like apps contribute to the problem, right? Like we're all supposed to be on social media, but the social part is, you know, I mean, how many people like sit next to somebody are constantly on their phone. You're not really engaging. You're not doing any of that. There's all sorts of apps to have lunch with people, to date people. Why are those not enough? What are we missing here? that is stopping people from creating the necessary relationships to help with the loneliness epidemic that is happening. And I will also say this, especially for men, you know what I mean? Like men over a certain age have a very hard time creating and maintaining friendships, right? They're, they're with their, their families, they're, they're doing all sorts of things. And it's hard for men to, especially if you've moved somewhere, like imagine being a man, you have a family, so you have obligations there, you have a job, and then you move to an area where, you know, you don't have your high school friends, college friends, or whatever. It's hard to, you know, let's say go to the gym, walk up to another man, and be like, mm, hey, do you want to strike up a friendship? It's hard. Like, women, 
I'm not saying it's easier, but women, it's kind of part of our personalities, right? We're in the mom's group or we're volunteering at our kids' school. It's very stereotypical. Right. I know this, but oftentimes that's the way it works out. I have a great group of moms that I'm friends with. And the only reason I'm friends with them is because I met them through my kids' school. That's right. the only through line. Mm -hmm. I, it's not easy for men. So I get that part. But do we need to use tax dollars and, and create another app to make it happen? So I don't think they're talking about men who have families, right? Who have, um, I don't know, a, a husband or wife who have children, who have people around them. I think they're they talking. Are. I think they're talking about people who are legit alone. Like they have no people around them. They live, they're single. They live alone. They were isolated during the pandemic, which, you know, that isolated them even further if they True. didn't have friends or people that they were surrounding or people that they worked with. Because sometimes that's on the only social relationship you have are people at work if you go home and you're single mm -hmm. and you don't have a lot of friends. Right. So I think those people sank deeper into isolation. And when that happens, there are, are mental health struggles that come along with that. You know, you feel alone. You feel Mm -hmm. all these exactly. things depressed perhaps so i think that's who they're trying to help but maybe well, i'm wrong well i mean okay so there's this one survey that said only 48 percent so less than half of men reported feeling satisfied with their friendships one in five men said they had gotten emotional support from a friend in the past week compared with four in ten women okay mm -hmm. so um but they do say the problem for fathers, so men with families, mm -hmm. is finding a new normal that meets needs as well as the needs of the women or their relationship in their lives. This one person at the Brookings Institution says there's very little support systems for fathers. And he means really institutional support on every level. Um, they say loneliness within fatherhood goes way beyond having a spouse. We have to go back to the most basic concept of community and that's friendship, the ability to seek advice or be vulnerable without fear. Side note, that's kind of ridiculous, but I watched these asinine reality TV shows, as you guys know, yeah. and some of the conversations that the men that are on the show have with each other, they even say it themselves They're like, well, I mean, he's not going to come to us and talk about how bad he's feeling in this relationship. So we just kind of tell him to, to kind of buck up and, and that's it. Men need more than that. And I think that that's what we realize is that where women can have an, a girl's night and, 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 and cry and, and do all those things, men are like, let's go get a beer. And are they really having those mm -hmm. way deeper than surface level conversations with mm -hmm. each other? And even if they are, is it just about the kids? Is it just about the wife or the partner? Is it about like, how are you feeling? Are you feeling satisfied in your life? Are you feeling fulfilled? Um, you know, are you stressed out? You know, yeah. all sorts of things that need to happen that, yeah, they could have with their wives, but it's different when it's with your friend. You know what I mean? And, and the statistics, you know, with mental health, they're saying mental health affects more than 50 million Americans. Most go without treatment every year because of the cost involved in getting, getting mental health. One of the most common mental illnesses, anxiety. 19%, uh, more than 19% of U.S. adults uh, apparently are diagnosed with anxiety. States with the highest rate of mental illness, Utah, um, nearly 30% of people in Utah, Mm -hmm. uh, have a mental illness or report having a mental illness or just California. California uh, goes down a little bit. I'm, they're not even on this list right here. They're not even in the top 10 or whatever, but still I can imagine, obviously a large state like California. Uh, oh, we're third. Here we go. States with the highest rate of untreated mental illness. California comes in third. You know, who's number one, Hawaii, Hawaii, nearly 70% of Hawaiians. Now, of course, the population in comparison to California, much different, but nearly 70 percent of Hawaiians are not treated for whatever mental illness that they may have. It's just, uh. Well, there's not there's depending on which island uh, you reside on. Well, in some cases, there's not a lot of health care options. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good mm -hmm. point. I'm not and I, I'm sorry. Am I mansplaining how to be a man? I'm not mansplaining how to be a man. Mm -hmm. I'm explaining the what I see as an outsider looking at male relationships, yeah. the ones that I know, maybe Jess, maybe, you know, the men in the comments, let me know in the comments, how many times do you gather your male friends and have deep conversations about things about mental health, 
about, you know, all sorts of, you know, things like that. Maybe you do. And I want to hear that. But a lot of the stories that and a lot of the anecdotal things that I see in my life mm -hmm. are not that. They're women have girls nights and and yeah. they're free to express their emotions and men go tie one on and, and get some laughs and maybe that's enough for them. But I think that there's a lot more men that need more than that and we should normalize that. So is putting tax dollars towards a new committee to deal with happiness worth it? And what would that look like? Yeah. I don't I don't know. More bureaucracy is where I guess I have my doubts. You know what I mean? Like you can create an app every day of the week, but I even think it's a big deal for a man even to download the app and use it. What are you going to do? Yeah. And I, I'm not judging, but I'm saying I can imagine a guy being like to his wife or his partner. So I, I downloaded this app and it's going to help me make friends. That's hard for some men to do. We need to get over that part, you know? Ricky O'Bear says, my introverted lifestyle has been misinterpreted as isolated depression. <laughs> I just don't like people, except you guys, of course. I love that. And that's fine. You know what I mean? There's a, As long as you're happy, right? I think the problem is, is that, that there are some people, and I think it goes across male women, uh, men and women and whatever, um, where you get into this, this, this kind of routine where you isolate yourself and then you're sad and you're depressed. I mean, I know... Some people we were, you know, kind of talking just the other day about loneliness and people. Mm -hmm. If you don't live with anybody, especially if you hit a certain age mm -hmm. and you have no family and you don't have any friendships that you've maintained, yeah, you could literally pass away and it could take all that's the story you read in the news. This person's decomposed body found inside an apartment oh, complex. God. Because oh. why? Because nobody was paying any attention. They didn't have any of these relationships. Mm -hmm. You do not want to, you know, that's sad. That's sad. So, um, you know, good on San Mateo, I guess. You know, the happiness committee sounds very hippy-dippy California-like. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to study happiness. Uh, I think most people do want to be happy. But going back to what Bill Maher said, don't yeah. expect to always be happy. Like, that's just, that is a goal that is not attainable. And it shouldn't be. We're human beings. We're going to have good days and we're going to have bad days. That's it. I love this. Gordon's in a men's support group to help with weekly stress. That's awesome. And so what is, is that through, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Gordon, if you can give a little more details, is that through a church? Is that through, like, how do people find something? How did you find something like that? Is that like, you know, you could find AA meetings in the newspaper or online. You could find men's support groups. I don't know. I've never mm -hmm. experienced because if it's that easy, I would urge so many men to do that. Right. I mean, because you need it. Um, if men even try to discuss emotions, they're laughed at and ridiculed. And that's so sad. Yep. It really is. I mean, I, I, I am blessed to have friends that if I could be like, God, I'm having a bad day. Can I vent? Not even a hit. Yes. Lay it on me. Lay it on me. You know what I mean? Like, yep. let me pour myself a drink and let's, let's sit on the mm -hmm. phone for, and I'm not a phone person. I'm really not with it, which might be surprising for some people. I just, I'm not somebody that likes to sit on the phone for a very long time, but if I do, let's do it. You know what I mean? And, and that's it. RJ, Nikki, you're hundred percent spot on. The only place I've found to have meaningful man-to-man -man conversations was in rooms of recover from alcoholism. Men are raised to not be emotionally intimate. And I'm trying to raise my son to be, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I'm, I know I bother the crap out of him, sit down. And he always gives me that look, him, you know, the look where your kids are like, oh, here she comes. Mm -hmm. Time to have a conversation. But I don't care. I want them to know, like, you could tell me anything that you want to. I love you no matter what. Uh, if I have a question about something, I'm going to straight up ask you. It's, you know, brutal honesty is what I say to my kids all the time. And, and yeah, it's, um, it's just something that people need. Um, Su Suzanne, Suanne, pardon me, says I'm retired. It's hard to find casual friendships like you can at work mm -hmm. and post pandemic social activities are even more rare. Yeah. It's th that has to be tough. Yeah. Ricky says, I suffer through Toastmasters. So my dad was in Toastmasters for a while, years ago. But that's also another place, like joining some sort of club. So, right. you know, you got to sometimes just put yourself out there. Um, before we go to, to headlines, just kind of on this note, I totally forgot to mention that I did something over the weekend. What? I, okay. <laughs> and here, I guess it kind of goes along with what we're talking about. And mm -hmm. and Kim and all of you that have been with us since, you know, the demise of KGO and, and doing this show and figuring everything out. 
you know, obviously we're really trying to make this show work. And it's definitely an identity crisis for people that have worked in a field for a very long time to mm -hmm. try to either figure out, am I going to stay in this? Am I going to morph it into something else? Or am I going to try something completely different? Right. And so I've kind of had this mantra lately that, I, that I'm trying to really, um, you know, dig deep into and to practice. And it is, I don't want to be defined by what I do. I just want to have an interesting life. I want when somebody asks me, what do you do t to, for the answer to be more than just what my job is or just right. being a mom or what? Like, not that those are yeah. bad things, but I want it to be more than that. Mm -hmm. So I did a volunteer orientation over the weekend and I found it like I was, you know, telling myself, you know, you, if, when you can't figure out what to do then give back, right? Like yeah. figure it out that way. Like that's something I read a long time ago and it's, it's very, very true. And, and so I told myself, self, if you're going to volunteer, what do you want to volunteer doing? Because that's also important, not for nothing, but you know, sometimes people volunteer at things and yeah, they might be passionate about it or right. they might just be checking a box. I didn't want to just check a box. I wanted to be excited about going to whatever I was doing to volunteer. So I just started my orientation over the weekend to volunteer at the tech. Now, you probably don't know what the tech is. The tech museum? It's called the Tech Interactive. It had okay. been rebranded many, many years ago. But yes, the tech museum, I grew up as the Tech Museum of Innovation. It's mm -hmm. called the Tech Interactive. It's down in downtown San Jose. I loved going there as a parent with the field trips, right? It is so much cooler every single time I go. And so, yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm going to necessarily know exactly what I'm doing day to day. But the reason why I wanted to do it is if somebody says, Nikki, what do you do with your life? Right? Like I have, I'm a, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. Those are obviously the two most important things that I am in this world. I do a YouTube show. I, I fill in when I can at KCBS and I volunteer. And, and those are the things that I think people need to do. It's, if you're looking for something to do with your life, find out what you're passionate about. And if mm -hmm. you can't get paid to do it, volunteer to do it, you right. know? And so I started doing that and I just, um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, and obviously I'm only going to be able to volunteer certain times because obviously I'm working and, and doing this show and doing all sorts of other things. But that's, that was an answer to me to kind of fulfill something in my life at a point in my life where, you know, it's kind of hard to yeah. transition to something else. So you're going to be a docent and lead tours there? So I don't know what I'm doing. So I had a sign. Okay. Uh, you go through orientation. They walk you through the whole entire thing. And then you tell them. It's really awesome. Honestly, they work with their – they have more volunteers that work at the Tech Interactive than they do staff members. They, they depend on their volunteers. And so I said I'd work with visitor services. So – you show up, you need to buy a ticket, those sorts of things. Or I could possibly do one of the displays. And every time I go, it could be something different. So, which is also exciting. I yeah. can't imagine just, you know, being bored and volunteering. I don't want to do that. I, I, I want to do something that I want to keep up. Mary says, okay, Nikki, your son's dad, my husband, needs to model that having conversations with him. Absolutely. You are absolutely right. It needs to be modeled, not just with the mom, which is, you know, the stereotypical talker mm -hmm. parent. But yeah, it has. And my husband does. We do have conversations and and all those sorts of things. He also is a soft place to land for our kids, which is which is what we want. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, D -d -d Jess is asking, how do we volunteer for a food bank? I work overnights and I'm available mornings. OK, so what I did, by the way, and the reason I found that the Tech Interactive was taking volunteers is just Google volunteer opportunities in California. You can put in your zip code. And then they laundry list. And at the Tech Interactive, I had to apply. It wasn't just like, I'm available. And they take everybody. Like, I had to fill out an application. They had to go through it. Uh, it was funny. I was texting my husband because I got there on Saturday morning at like 9 in the morning. And uh, I show up. And it's a bunch of college kids <laughs> because they're – I don't know if they're getting volunteer hours, but it was a bunch of volunteer uh, – the volunteers were college kids. There was about nine of us that were there. And so I'm texting my husband, and I'm like – Oh my God, I think I'm the old lady in the volunteer thing. Even though this was adult volunteering, it's totally fine. Um, and then an older gentleman showed up like right after me. I was like, I'm not the young, I'm not the oldest person here. This guy's here too. Uh, but yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. And so when I am volunteering, you know, maybe you can see me there if you ever go there. I have to tie in this to uh -huh. our discussion about mental health. Uh-huh. Because my sister is a therapist. Okay. And she had told me a long time ago 
that the people that are the happiest, most fulfilled, and most content in their lives right. are the people that have found a way to give back. Yes, exactly. The, the people that volunteer or the people that have found a way to help others without the um, the motivation being to money. be thanked or to be have money or to right. whatever, but just selflessly giving. Yeah. Those are the people that end up being most fulfilled and the most mentally healthy. Exactly. And mm-hmm. and again, it's it's who are you as a person? And, and again, leaving KGO. And thank you so much, Murphy, for the $5 donation. Hey. says, your show and Marks are so important. Listening to KGO was a huge part of my day when working at home. This community is very special. Exactly. Yeah, it is. Um, and, but again, like when I went, and Kim knows, when we left KGO, and I, identity crisis is an understatement, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and even when I work at KCBS, I was literally just talking to my husband about it the other day. I enjoy it. I love it. You know what I mean? Like I love being on the radio when I get a cut up sound and stories, I'm good at it. You know, mm-hmm. it is, and it stinks to be good at something and then not be able to do it at the station that you used to be at. And I'm mm-hmm. very honored that, you know, I get to fill in at KCBS when I get to do that, but it's not the same as doing KGO or doing the talk show in that sort of format either. So I love this as well. And, and I love the community that we formed, but I wanted more, you know, I want, I want more. Um, and so I'm really excited. And so I think I should actually be finding out today. They should oh. be reaching out to me about some of the opportunities and, and I'll still be doing the show. The volunteer hours totally work with my schedule and I get to choose the days that I can do. And I don't know, man, the tech interactive is pretty freaking cool. So I'm stoked that, uh, that I get to do it. And so if you're looking for something to do, I always say give back and, 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 and you'll get some fulfillment there. Yeah. All right, let's do some more headlines. And then when we're done with that, I'm going to tell you. So if it's in your news, take it out. The 16 worst paying college majors five years have it. after graduation. All right, good. Um, so if you have a kid that's going to college. My mom I'm, sent it to me, though, and I'm like, oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> so Kim knows. But yeah, it is kind of a bummer. But, you know, just like I was talking about, just because you don't major in something doesn't mean you still can't do it and include it in your life. All right. Let's do some headlines with Kim. Now, from around the world to up your street, the Nikki Maduro Show presents new czar Kim McAllister. The Supreme Court appears skeptical of limiting how the government can communicate with social media platforms. The high court heard arguments today on whether the Biden administration's plan to remove the misinformation now, from around the world to Ooh. up your street. Do it again. Let's do Sorry, it all over I again. I hate that friggin' loop. Sorry. I know, me too. No, okay. it screws me up all the time. I totally get it. It's I mean, we love confusing. your intro, but let's just do it once. Okay, exactly. There you go. <laughs> so the high court heard arguments today about whether the Biden administration's push to remove misinformation on social media platforms violated the First Amendment. The case focuses on communications from administration officials urging platforms to police information about the legitimacy of the 2020 election and the pandemic. I mean, I don't know. Hold on. Mm -hmm. The thing about policing your own content is it doesn't seem efficient. You know, it doesn't seem like you could catch everything. And there's ways around it. I was just talking about that guy unliving himself, the Boeing whistleblower, Mm -hmm. right? The reason I said unliving is because it gets around the algorithm. There are things that people do, the way they type, the asterisks, the all sorts of things that they put on that get around Mm -hmm. all of that sort of stuff. So it's not going to be 100%. Uh, this is going to be really interesting to watch. It is. And I mean, if there's lies on the internet that are yeah, hurting who society. It? You're allowed to lie. It's not against the mm. law to lie. It's not. It's not against the law unless you're, you know. Uh, but look where we ended up with lies and, and, and misinformation. And Trump in the a- White House. Yes. Mm. A liar in the White House. Yep. Mm-mm. That's exactly what. I, you're right. Don't so I don't know what do the answer something? is. We I mean, do something. Yeah. I do want something to be done. I just don't know what it's going to look like. This next picture, I'm putting it up only because it's, um, it seems to be appropriate given the topic of the story. All right. Ah, Trump and money. As we mentioned earlier, former president Trump is unable to secure the $464 million fraud judgment against him in New York. 
Trump needs to post bond by next, by next week or New York Attorney General Letitia James can start collecting during the appeals process. According to legal documents filed today, Trump's legal team is asking the appeals court to step in, adding finding a bond is practically impossible. Yeah. Can't find the money. Nobody Mm-mm. wants to give you money, Trump. It's amazing. You're not like a good investment. <laughs> it's, it's a shocker. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at the uh, President Biden camp, the White House says President Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today. Mm. Leaders discussed the latest developments in the Israel-Hamas war, including the situation in Rafah and efforts to increase aid to Gaza. The call between the leaders comes amid growing tensions between Israeli leadership and leadership here in the United States. In Sacramento, Governor Gavin Newsom is postponing his annual State of the State address. That's because of the fate of Prop 1, his key mental health initiative, and it is still undecided. Yeah. doesn't want to give the speech until after we know what the story is. The measure, which is aimed at addressing homelessness and mental health care with $6.4 billion in funding, faces a close outcome following the March 5th ballot. Governor Newsom's delay comes as fewer than 20,000 votes separate yes and no on that proposition, with no official call being made yet. A spokesperson confirmed the postponement and says a new date will be announced in coordination with the legislature. But for now, state of the state pushed off. Yeah. And if you missed our conversation on Friday, it's up. Uh, look under the the other shows on this channel with Emily Hoven. She starts off talking about her nonsense parking permit story, which is funny. Mm-hmm. But then she gets into Prop 1 and really how Newsom blew it on how to fund this proposition and all that sorts of uh, sort of things. So really great interview. It was on Friday. I just posted it today, uh, but it's going to start with a parking rule, uh, but you'll see Emily Hoven in the description. The father of murdered Georgia nursing student, Lake and Riley says he is angry that her death is being used politically speaking on the today show. Jason Riley said his daughter should be raised up for the person that she is. Riley was allegedly murdered by an undocumented immigrant on the campus of the University of Georgia. Her father called her an angel, and he said he wished he could have protected her. There is a third person that has died following an accident where uh, an SUV crashed into a bus shelter in San Francisco. Authorities say a couple standing with their toddler and baby Saturday afternoon when the vehicle slammed into the shelter on Ulloa Street. The f- you say Ulloa or Uloa? I think it's Ulloa. You're asking the wrong person. I have no idea. Say it with authority and that's the right way to say yes. it. There you go. The father and the toddler, oh, sad, were both killed in this wreck. The mother died from her injuries on yeah. Sunday. They wiped out a whole family by hitting a bus shelter. I thought the, the baby was, oh, did the baby die? The baby is in critical condition at the hospital. Yeah. Ugh. Friends I mean, of the family ugh. say they were waiting for the bus to go on a trip to the zoo when oh. this happened. The driver of the SUV remains in the hospital, and it's unclear exactly what led up to that crash. I mean, they're going to be looking at this, obviously, road safety and things like that. I saw this on Saturday, and I was just, it was crazy. I mean, imagine just standing there, you know? And yeah, so we don't know, you know, obviously what led to the crash, like Kim just said, but Mm. that is just awful. That is just awful. Meanwhile, Oakland police are trying to solve a church vandalism case. Police say vandals have targeted the Buddhist church at 9th and Jackson streets several times since November. So this isn't a one-time deal. In each instance, surveillance video has shown vandals throwing rocks and bottles to break windows at the church and then dumping large amounts of garbage right outside the church doors. Church leaders believe the constant issues uh, warrant charges being upgraded to a hate crime once these vandals are actually caught. Wow, that yeah. sucks. I don't just, whatever. I, I mean, I don't know if it's idle hands or if it's a hate crime. It's just it's ridiculous. The EPA is banning the last form of asbestos used in the United States. The government agency called it a major milestone for chemical safety by banning the ongoing use, which has been linked to multiple types of cancer. It applies to types of asbestos used in car parts. According to the EPA, asbestos exposure is linked to more than 40,000 deaths in the United States. Wow. Meanwhile, Sports Illustrated is avoiding its shutdown with a new publishing deal. 
Minute Media will now publish this magazine. The Arena Group, which published Sports Illustrated since 2019, stopped paying Authentic Brands Group its licensing fee for publishing rights in January. Mm. Authentic owns Sports Illustrated intellectual property rights. Arena told staffers the time most would get laid off at the time, most of them would be laid off. But now Minute will continue the print edition of the magazine and expand its digital uh, future as well. Minute Media is a sports focused company that publishes other brands including the players tribune so they're moving into the sports realm i mean do you think that and again industry is changing Mm -hmm. do you subscribe to any magazines no i mean when's the last time you actually the last time i purchased on purpose a magazine yeah was Vogue because Harry Styles was on the cover and I gave it to my daughter for Christmas. I'm not even kidding. Um, I have, I think, GQ, I think I got, or or one of those like Home and Garden magazines. It was a fundraiser for my nieces. I think right. that's, you know, I bought a magazine for that. But going in and being like, ooh, I'm going to buy this magazine. And I don't read magazines online either. So I don't know what's going to happen with this medium, really. Yeah. My mom subscribes to Time and People. Oh, I like people. Time, mm-hmm. I feel like, eh, I've never been a time reader. I, I mean, you know, they have the little, you know, cover, yeah. I'll read that. But I've never been sure. much of a time reader. I feel like, though, and I I do go to magazines online. I go, there's a popular science magazine that oh. I look at all the time. And oh, also cool. People magazine because I'm doing entertainment news sometimes. Yes. So I need to. So yeah. I do look at the online versions of these magazines. But I don't subscribe to them because I don't want the paper laying around and the stacks of stuff. So you're not giving them any money. So they're going to go bust. That's my point, right? Yeah. That's the thing. It's 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 similar to brick and mortar stores, right? It's like yeah. you like to see it there, <laughs> yeah. but you have to spend money. That's how the whole world goes around business wise. So, yeah. Um, you were talking about St. Patrick's Day and mm-hmm. what you did yesterday, mm-hmm. and I have a story. I'm trying to um, find a St. Patrick's Day picture. <laughs> I don't have one. Hold on. I'll there find one. Oh, got you one. got it. I got it. I got okay. it. Here it is. Same fact. Not that I can't do the story without it, but hey, there it is. There you go. Look okay. at the Irish. Look at the Irish. And so <laughs> President Biden says St. Patrick's Day has always been a special day for his family. He hosted about 200 guests, including Ireland's prime minister and leaders of the Catholic Church at the White House Sunday for a St. Patrick's Day brunch. He said the belief that you're not done until you've seen the face of God inspired generations of Irish to keep going even in the face of enormous setbacks. The president adding it is also in- has inspired millions of Irish immigrants to leave their homeland and begin life in new America. Nice. Sunday's brunch menu included Irish dishes like cool cannon, Irish soda bread, eggs, Florentine and bacon. So that's what they did at the bacon. white house for St. Patrick's day. Nice. I, I didn't know that was Irish. I didn't either. <laughs> it is. Bacon's and good. anytime. it's fine. Speaking of food, it is today. Oh, Sloppy Joe Day. I love Sloppy Joes. Do you like Sloppy Joes? Interestingly, yes, I do. I do. I'm I've not always a big fan liked of them. A meat, big meat sandwich, but there's something about a Sloppy Joe. Oh, yeah. Sloppy yeah. Joe Day at school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wrapped in foil, buns all soft. I lo- I mean, I like, sl- I mean, now you're going to make me. No, we're having, we're having corned beef sandwiches tonight, but I like. Yeah. I do like a sloppy Joe. Um, my husband likes to put cheese on it. I'm not much of a cheese person no. on it, but Mm-mm. I can. And if you give me um, like the small hot, uh, hamburger buns, I can eat two. But if it's a big one, I can only eat one. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, that's a that's a yummy treat for you right there. Do your kids like it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, David bakes bread. That's right. So and he, he makes-, makes like fresh buns Ooh. that are like, oh, my God, it, right out of the oven with the sloppy Joe. It's so good. I swear you're so freaking spoiled woman. I swear I to God. That is so awesome. Mm, sloppy That's Joe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this report is sponsored by you, which it means is. we do uh, rely on you to help us fund this show. The Nikki Maduro show.com. And also in the show description is where you'll find all the links you need to help us do what we'd like to do. And thank you for it. I'm Kim McAllister. This is the Nikki Maduro show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, some of the comments though. Sloppy Joe day was big for school lunches and pizza day. Yeah. Pizza day, hot lunch day it was sloppy Joe or it was pizza. And I love mm-hmm. both John, the bell burgers at Taco Bell. When are they bringing those back? That was kind of like a sloppy Joe mm-hmm. with the, with the beef there. 
Oh, yeah. I, all kinds of Sloppy Joes. Yeah. Now all Sloppy Joes. Uh, Adam Sandler. Billy Madison. That was that that, uh, that movie. I don't think I've had a Sloppy Joe since elementary school. I'm not ashamed to say we, I mean, it's not a regular thing on the house menu. But no. if I remember to pick up a can of Manwich and some hamburger buns, which I actually might do because um, we had burgers over the weekend and we bought way too many hamburger buns. So we mm -hmm. have a bunch. So maybe I'll pick up some. And I got some ground beef. We went to Costco. It was a nice day. We didn't make it to Bed Bath & Beyond. There just wasn't time. Mm. Uh, but another movie reference. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll make some Sloppy Joes tomorrow. I know it's not Sloppy Joe Day, but we're having our corned beef sandwiches tonight. I'm, I'm looking forward yeah. to that too, too much. All right. Uh, before we end the show, we have to give you some advice mm -hmm. on what you should or should not send your kid to college to major in. Now, I just said that. But Cam, when I tell you the list, and I know that you've already read it, but mm -hmm. is that going to dissuade your child from going into any of this? So according to the New York Federal Reserve Analysis, Students who major in liberal arts, performing arts, and theology earn the lowest salaries within five years of graduating from college. All three made a median annual income of $38,000. That's the lowest out of the 75 majors in the study. Other low-paying majors include leisure and hospitality, history, fine arts, and psychology, all which made $40,000 or less per year. Now, for context, that's slightly less than the U.S. personal income median of $40,480 as of 2022. Um, look, there's nothing wrong with going to college and studying and majoring in liberal arts or theology if you have a plan of how you're going to use that degree and if you're fully aware of how much that that income is going to bring within the next five years. If you know you're going to make less than $40,000 a year and you don't give two craps because you've decided you're going to live in a certain area that has a certain cost of living, more right. power to you. But if you think that you're going to make $38,000 a year as a single person and live in the Bay Area, you're living with your parents. Like yeah. that's just the truth. You can't afford it. So I don't have a problem with it, but I'm just... Like major in what you're passionate about, but what is the plan with that degree? I don't understand people who go to college, major in something, knowing full well that they're never going to get a job using it. Then what? Then just do it on your free time after you get a job that pays your bills. Am I wrong? John, with a good point. You really want, you can major in them, but don't rack up massive debt getting them. Go to community college exactly. and state college to get them. Right. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. But I was surprised by some of the majors that are on the list. Can Did you write, you didn't read them yet, did you? Well, I mean, it's liberal arts, right. performing arts, theology, leisure and hospitality, social sciences, history, biolog miscellaneous biological science, fine arts, treatment therapy, nutrition sciences, psychology, anthropology, family and com consumer sciences, right. social services, elementary education, and early childhood education. So I'm surprised by biology and miscellaneous sciences, because often people that are going on to careers in the medical field where you do make money if you're a doctor, right, or a nurse, right. often, um, will major in biology or some type of biological science. So that's a surprise to me. And also psychology, psychology yeah. because you have to take get that degree before you move on to get a degree in, you know, as a therapist or whatever else. Right. So, and those people make money. Yeah, but I think they're talking like five years after getting that initial degree, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes that time. And again, if you're racking yeah. up debt, then that's a major problem, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, Lady Beatrice says, nothing wrong with going to college and the cost is more than the job market value, so they need to make college affordable. I mm -hmm. get that. Eric says, anything non-STEM isn't respected anymore. And you're right. According to this survey, everything that made good money was in STEM fields. But mm -hmm. if you're not interested in STEM, right? And let's add the caveat, who knows what technology is going to be like five years after you get your degree. So mm -hmm. you're going in to learn about AI when it's in its infancy in whatever we're learning about right now. In five, 10 years, it's going to be much higher. So you have to factor in keeping up those skills, being yeah. uh, you know up to date on the latest and greatest thing. Uh, Shannon says, if you graduate in psychology, you need to go to graduate school to make money. 
exactly maybe, maybe people in those fields are not making money five years after they get their bachelor's of right. arts or science because they're just getting out of grad school yeah exactly so i mean, I I mean we know. have to keep all of those yeah. those facts in mind mm -hmm. it was funny i was at my my friend we went to high school together we went to chico together um, she went to San Jose state as well, though at different times than I did. And, uh, I was at her parents' house cause it was her, her son's birthday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we went to Chico together and everybody knows I left Chico because I was not getting anything done. Right. Neither was my friend. She did worse than I did. Mm -hmm. Sorry, babe. Um, and so her mom, you know, her mom used to send her daughter care packages that I get, you know, benefited immensely from mm -hmm. and so i'm sitting at the kitchen table and you know it's a full cir circle moment because she's known me since i was a kid obviously and we're talking about college because her other friend has kids about to go to college i mean we're just getting to be that age and i said you know as your kids getting accepted to these colleges you have to factor in financial aid it's all good that you can get in but can you afford it right. you don't want the debt blah 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 and so i said i was like you know what i've told my kids I'm a huge proponent of community college, especially if you haven't figured out what you want to do yet. Mm -hmm. Don't waste 40, 50, 60, 70,000 dollars a year figuring it out. Yep. And my friend's mom, <laughs> she's like, "Good idea." And she's like eyeballing me. I'm like, "But we had fun that year that we wasted at Chico mm -hmm. State." She's like, "Yeah, on my dime." And I'm like, "Yeah, I get it. My dad still throws it in my face as well." But nowadays, it's so ex expensive that yeah. if you don't know i would rather and again I'll, as the one paying the bill obviously i would rather but i'd also want my kid to not feel so much pressure out the gate to mm -hmm. have to know definitively go to community college take the theology course the psychology course the whatever course mm -hmm. and it's a fraction of the cost uh, you know what I mean? You might realize you don't like it. How many people say, mm -hmm. I want to go to medical school? <laughs> they take their initial classes and they're like, oh, I don't want to memorize all this stuff or I'm not as passionate about it. Let's figure it out earlier on and, and give you a little bit of that space and that grace to mm -hmm. figure it out. Right now, the college admission letters are coming out over the Ooh. past few weeks. Okay. My niece is going through this. So far, okay. she's gained entry and oh, good. accepted to UC Davis. Nice. That's a hard UC college to get into. UCLA. She got nice. in there. UC San Diego. She got in there. Yep. And Cal Poly. Wow. We're good for her. We're still waiting on UC Santa Barbara and Cornell. Those Which, are the ooh, other two. Jesus. I know. Fancy. So what's her number one? So her, it was UC Davis because she wants to be a vet. Oh, perfect. But now she's thinking maybe she'll major in biology over at uh, UCLA, which could be really great, right? Mm -hmm. And What's the she's... switch from vet to biology? Um, so at UC Davis, they have an, it's an animal science degree, I think you get. Okay. Whereas at other schools, you just major in biology and then transfer into vet school, right? Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So and you still have to learn. It's all very science. You still have to learn all these things. Okay. But she was telling me that a lot of her students or a lot of her friends mm -hmm. and some that are even ranked above her in her school get you know as gpa wise mm -hmm. have not gotten into these schools it's no rhyme or reason sometimes no right? rhyme or reason like what is it it was her essay better probably Did she have more volunteer work did she was it somebody was in a good mood the day they read the application you don't know you don't know i mean it's a, you you just don't i mean you, you'd like to think that it had something to do with all the the things you the did work that and she put in yeah all that racked up but sometimes maybe not yeah and so these these kids that are top of class that have you know done volunteer work that have taken classes at the JC, some of them don't get into UCs, and so then what do you do? Right, you put well, this enormous pressure on yourself all through high school to be this exemplary student, and you don't end up getting in where you want to get in. Yeah. Well, there's a real easy way to fix that, and it's the junior, you know, the yeah. junior college route. Yep. Your first two years, and at the end, they don't say, "Oh, you got your degree from you know." No, Santa Rosa Junior it's where you College. graduated from. That's, That's right. all they it care about. It doesn't matter. No. Nope. And so people were, are going to end up feeling during this season really bad about themselves because for whatever arbitrary reason, they didn't get into a college. Yeah. But it's it shouldn't have to be that way. But I would also say this, and, and I could be wrong, but again, if you expand, I, fi I find it very hard to believe that if mm -hmm. you apply to every single college in the United States, which I'm not saying you have to do, but ever, let's just say mm -hmm. you applied, you will get into college. 
it might not be that dream, that big brand, that big name college, right? right? It might not be the top, but again, if you want mm -hmm. to go to a four-year college right out the gate, you don't want to go the JC route, okay? And I know that some people are like, I want the college experience of going immediately to a four-year whatever college. Okay, but it might not be these colleges. So you yeah. should have an A but list a b list a c mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you can go to college there, it's just not going to be ucla uc yeah. davis um and you have to be okay with that or yeah. like i'm a big proponent of go to jc mm -hmm. you got to get the g done anyway you know what i mean like yeah oh, maybe you're not going away but there are jc's you can just go mm -hmm. away to and you're not also not bound to have to stay on campus yeah. or get campus housing you can get an apartment if you feel like you're ready for that you can do those things Oh, Brandy says the average GPA for incoming freshmen at UCLA is over a 4.0. So 4.0 used to be perfect, now right? These like are, these were the kids that tried the hardest. Mm -hmm. Now 4.0 is standard. Yeah, like that's if crazy. you don't get straight A's, then you know now it's a, you're you're taking the 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 junior college classes in high school yeah. to get the extra to get yeah. the weighted GPA, right? You're taking the AP classes. I'm telling you, like these kids have to be perfect. Yeah, what kind of pressure? I see my own daughter going through this. You mm -hmm. know looking at grades it's num it's a numbers game trying yep. to make sure that her grades are up but then knowing... it's not even guaranteed if you stress about it that you're gonna no. get in and that's the problem I'm telling you kids with a 4.0 are denied entry at cal are denied entry at ucla uc davis uc mm -hmm. san diego all of these places where Californians should be guaranteed entry, right? Yeah. Well, Not anymore. there's Not... too many people applying. Yeah. They can't take mm. everybody. And if every parent is telling their kids, you have to get straight A's and then you'll get into the school. If everyone's saying that and everyone's doing that, then obviously people are going to be denied. Yeah. And there are going to be people that have less than a 4.0 that are going to get into some of these colleges because one, Maybe it's a good day. Maybe it's a good essay. Maybe they're looking right. for something beyond the 4.0 because that's not right. special anymore. Exactly. So, you know, that's again yeah. why on one hand, yes, I want my kids to do really, really well in school. I want them to figure out what they want to do with the rest of their lives. And if that means giving them the opportunity to slow things down a little bit, okay. And mm -hmm. I'm not one, maybe because of what I did at Chico, I'm not <laughs> one to be a push in the whole college experience thing yeah. like you know what you'll still be invited to your friends parties you can visit your fr friends at their colleges if you want to look into the trades just like somebody just gym welding an hvac mm -hmm. you know my husband makes buku bucks in, in an hvac unit uh union look into that because mm -hmm. you know what as stem becomes more popular there's, they're going to be overloaded with workers and they're going to yeah. be desperate and pay for those that know the trades. <gasps> Joe, yeah. thank you so much for the $50 donation. What a great way to wrap up the show. Vegas, baby. Joe says in Vegas, want to share my St. Patrick's <laughs> Day. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. Let's give us some more yeah. thank yous today. But Joe, thank you so much for that. Uh, oh, sorry. Joe said a $5 donation. She, uh, he wrote, love these subjects. This is why my daughter and I love the show. Sparks up conversations. Oh, yeah. Thank you both. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Murphy with a $5 donation talking about listening went mm -hmm. to KGO being a huge part of your day. Murphy, it was ours as well. Thank you for the $5 donation. Lady Beatrice, $10 donation. Good for Biden. People throw a lot of shade on age. Trump shouldn't be throwing stones here. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Vilma, as well for the $5 super sticker. Hey. You rock so much. Doug, also with a $5 super sticker. Love seeing you in the chat as well. Spencer, $5 donation. Too bad I didn't short Boeing. It's priced by now, in by now. Yeah, uh, Boeing should have been shorted. Harry, quote for the day. When one door closes, another opens. That's a Boeing joke with a $5 donation. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We depend on you guys to yeah. keep the show going. So please donate to our Patreon. You could find it at thenickymadoroshow.com. You could donate any amount you can afford. We understand that some of you can't afford it and can just show up and, and participate in the chat. Mm -hmm. We love you guys as well. But if you want to keep the show going and you can afford it, please consider donating. Uh, PayPal. Also, go to paypal.com, hit the send button, and put in the email address, the Nikki Maduro Show at gmail.com. All right, you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Stay here for the Mark Thompson Show and the After Party Live with Kim. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Nikki, you're all so awesome, you sprout, like a beautiful blossom, you're all so the best, I really can't rest, you're all so awesome. <laughs> wow.